everybody, welcome to Ken Knows Gambling, and today we're going to talk about the outcome uh, with my client, his name is Bob, and uh, he, he allowed me to, to say his name, I'll just give you his first name, and how me and Bob made out, okay? So for the folks that don't really know, uh, Bob is a client of mine, he hired me to come to the casino with him and uh, help him uh, with his strategy, some tweaks, whatnot. That was the whole point of me going. I know <laughs> there was somebody, I forgot who it was, said, wow, what a nice gig to go and be a coach to somebody and, and uh, get paid for it. Well, yeah, that ain't a bad thing. Uh, but there was a couple tweaks that we made, and Bob even told me that was worth the price of admission. And I'm going to get into that when I get over to the board and sort of explain a little bit how we did. First of all, I want to say, Bob, I met his wife, Nancy. They are down to earth, great, great freaking people, man. Uh, you'll never meet a nicer couple in your life. I'm not kidding you. He did everything he said he would do for me and then some and uh, I really appreciate him and his wife for being great great hosts uh, we were in Biloxi uh, we were at the palace now I know they have an imperial palace and then just the palace casino uh, and we we went there very nice place I loved this place because it's small enough that you can get around to everything it's not so ginormous where you get lost Okay, uh, $10 minimum tables, uh, nice atmosphere, more of a just a laid back, everybody's friendly, unlike a lot of Vegas places where they're just corporate, ran, 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 they've got a frown on their face, and it's just, you know, give me your money, check 10, five, ran, ran, and they're just bleh. I think everybody knows uh, <laughs> some places in Vegas were like that, but this was more of a town home or a hometown feel. A really, really nice place. So kudos to the palace and uh, Bob picking that place. So as far as that goes, he treated me well. I appreciate you, Bob. I really, really do. You are a fine, fine guy and your wife. I was glad to meet you and I'm glad this trip uh, worked out. When I get over to the board, I sort of try to explain how it went. Uh, but what I did know until I got there. Now, his strategy is set to make a lot of money. I mean, a lot of it. And I thought that's how we were going to play. Now, first of all, it took me about two weeks, uh, maybe even longer, back and forth with Bob and emails and charts and whatnot to really learn this thing because there's a lot of nuances to it and more nuances than I will get into uh, today. However, uh, when I got there, he says, well, let's just play at half speed. And I said, well, why? And he goes, well, this trip is more about data. Now, he writes every roll down. He computes every single roll. And just so you know, a session is 150 outcomes. Not 150 rolls, man. 150 decisions, Okay. So each session is about four hours long. We played a session in the morning and a session at night. So we were on the table about eight hours per day. And uh, a lot of rolling, man. A lot of things happening. But uh, I'll get over to the table and I'll sort of share with you a little bit, as much as I can tell you without going in too much uh, detail. I know the question that everybody is asking, did you win? The answer is yes. Uh, we did win, but Bob even told me more important than what we won is what we discovered. Because sometimes it's not what about you know, okay? It's more about the tweak, and, and that's why I was there. I was sort of there to go, well, what about this, or what about that? And there's a move uh, that we ended up did that, uh, ended up doing that he actually told me that was worth the whole price that he paid for me, and I'll share that with you over there. Great trip, great people, 
And uh, I don't exactly know how much he won because I just gave him all the money. I didn't even count it. And he counted it and he had a little pouch that he put all his money in. And uh, <laughs> just, a, just a great, 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 great time. Great people. So we'll get over to the table. We'll learn a little bit about what we did, what we could have done, and the tweaks that we made. And uh, I, think you'll, I think you will enjoy it. So... Without any further ado whatsoever, let's just get to it. All right, everybody, we're over at the table, and I'm going to uh, try without getting into too much detail, because he asked me not to get into grave detail, so I won't. Uh, one little caveat that I failed to mention in the opening, the only snafu to the whole trip was that my happy ass missed my flight. And uh, all the money that I had made, <laughs> I had to spend on a flight uh, to get home. Uh, so that's my bad because I'm an idiot. And uh, <laughs> so it's actually pretty funny. But uh, anyway, I got home last night. I don't think I slept two hours a night for the whole trip. And uh, I slept 12 hours. Uh, I got home at 8.30, went to bed, and didn't get up till about 8.30. Uh, so my happy ass needed to sleep, uh, so I just thought I'd add that to you. Okay, so wh what is Bob doing? Okay, so this is a strict don't, okay, which is why I'm a fan of it. It's a strict don't, okay? He plays at a $10. Now, you could play it any way you wanted to, but he goes $10, and then you would think max odds. It's max odds sometimes. And it's not max odds other times, okay? There's just reasons to what he does, and this is what took me so long to learn. But basically, he has a $10 don't pass, okay? Now, what Bob will do is he does it sort of different than most of us actually playing the dark side. So, if the point is a 4 or 10, he's only going to hit it for 60 bucks, okay? That's it. Now, me and you would probably max the odds on the 410. He doesn't, he does it sort of differently. He maxes it on the six and eight, where I don't like it, and I may even lay off the six or eight, or very, very little odds on that. But in his theory, and in his working, uh, he has discovered to himself that that's the way to play it, okay? All right, so basically, if you win that, okay, you're going to win 30 bucks. All right, and then you take it down. Now, if it's a 5, 6, 8, or 9, you're loading up, okay? It's 120 bucks. All right, so that's 10 times odds. Uh, if the six hits, you're gonna win 100. And if the five, or six or eight, if the five or nine hits, you're gonna win 80, okay? Now, it's not full pressure all the time. It is not. It is about different calculations. So, depending on how many times you win here, and how much you win here will affect the next don't pass, okay? Now, Bob could have won a whole lot more money. Uh, he didn't play his strategy to full potential because all these wins here would have necessarily started bumping up his don't pass. And then obviously, you know, 10 times odds when you're up to, you know, 20, well, hell, now it's 240. Hell, this may get up to 50 bucks. Okay. And now, she's, you know, uh, you're up to 500, 600 bucks uh, up here. Okay. He decided not to play full tilt. Uh, he told me it wasn't about the money on this trip, it was more about uh, analysis. And trying to figure a couple of things out, which we did. So here's one of them. 
Okay. What we discovered is this. Well, at least I rolled a lot. I mean, there's a lot of people there that didn't even want to roll. I don't necessarily like rolling, but I did. I had to roll a lot, okay? <clears throat> and what we discovered in a very, very short time, these 11s and 7s were kicking this butt on the come out. It just seemed like those, you know, two and a half days until we made the tweak, the two and a half days we were there, we lost five, six hundred dollars here on ten dollar lousy bets. Now remember, he played his half speed, okay, so he didn't keep coming up here. He just stayed pretty much at a ten dollar level, okay. Now he has a stopping point and an upping point depending on what happens, and there gets to the intricate little details that I'm not going to go into. Uh, but what we discovered is, man, oh man, oh man, uh, we were getting killed. I remember one time I was rolling. I think I had, you know, maybe four sevens and five elevens. I was just unfrickin' believable. And every time I rolled it, Bob was like, He's like, man, you're just going to roll a seven on a come out. Damn sure if I didn't, uh, or an 11, yeah, the twos and 12s and threes uh, would come every once in a while, but not as often as you think. And uh, when we got up to about $600 or so losing here, I had asked the dude, I said, listen, let's go ahead and do a do we don't so we can stop that crap because his whole strategy is based on the odds anyway. That's meaningless, really. This number, whether it's 15, 20, 50, whatever, just tells him what odds that he's going to put. That's all. This is sort of meaningless. However, um, just in $10 bets, we got whack. So I asked the, I asked the, uh, the dealers there, can we do it? Do we don't? And they initially said no. And I'm like, well, crap. But Bob seems to know everybody in the world. I mean, there were so many people coming up saying hello from other states and whatnot. This guy's well liked uh, and knows a lot of people. Um, and so the casino, if I'm recollecting correctly, they decided to let him do it. Okay. Now, so the seven doesn't bother him anymore. The twos. Uh, he's still, you know, it's still an even process except for the 12, which is no big deal. They didn't come that much. Okay. And then here comes the tweak. That was a big tweak for him. That saved him from losing. Uh, if, if we were able to have done this, uh, the Dewey don't from get go, that would have saved him, uh, losing five or $600 on the come out roll. Okay, and then here comes one more tweak that we decided to put into play. Now, I know John <clears throat> over at Pro Craps uh, this morning, and by the way, I got to see your, your channel once. I haven't been really watching anybody. I've been so busy doing other things. Uh, so here was the train of thought. Well, you could, you know, say put a dollar on the on the 12 and you can keep throwing them out there and i think it would eventually bleed uh and, and protect yourself okay where the seven would still be a wash the 12 here would lose the pass line but you would compensate for it and i said and, and there was another fellow playing this way too and i says why don't we put ten dollars in the field at the same time okay we're still going to lose on the seven, okay? The seven would take this and push this, but only the seven is going to hurt us there, okay? The 11, we're going to win. You push here, you win, the, uh, you win two, uh, one to one, sorry, on the 11, okay? If the three comes, one to one. So there's sometimes you don't tie, you win. Okay, I'm not a really big fan of the field necessarily, but in this particular way, you know, that's what happens. If a two comes, 
Now, it was double. Both were double down there. They didn't have a triple. That's too bad. But if the two comes, all right, you're going to get here. This pushes. Fine. And then you're going to win two units here. The three obviously wins a unit. But when the four and the nine and the ten comes, you're winning a unit. So you're not just tying every single time. Okay? Uh, and I said, Bob, let's do this. And he really, 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 really liked that move. There was a lot of times then the 12 would come and we'd get paid double. The two would come, we'd get paid double. A lot of fours, nines, and tens. <laughs> so we stopped the bleed on just getting your ass whooped uh, on the don't pass. It stopped it. Now I know some people are saying, well, play the horn. Or just play the 12 or whatever. And you could, okay? But this way, you're not getting 30 to 1, 15 to 1. I get it. But you're still picking up more numbers. It's a 40-some-odd percent chance of winning this up here anyway. And it ended up making money. Now, you still lose on the 7, uh, but, but no more than you were going to lose anyway, right? You still lose on the 7 uh, this way, right? That pushes and you lose, but you pick up all them other numbers all at the same time. And that was the key. Uh, he actually told me this little tweet right here that, uh, that I decided to, to put into this. This little tweet, he told me, was worth me even going down there. Okay? So, that was one tweet. It saved us a lot because there was a lot of come out of 11s, man. Uh, and he's doing his little chart. Uh, on paper, and it was over the sevens and elevens uh, by normal what they should hit, you know, six of twelve or eight of twelve or whatnot. They were like three times higher than they should have been, or four times higher. The comeouts were just unbelievably that way, especially more elevens than I've seen in my life. Uh, you know, four or five in a row type crap, just unnormal. Uh, type of things. Um, so that's why we decided pass, don't, do we don't, and in the field. Okay, so there's tweak number one. All right, tweak number two. About a week uh, before I flew out there, Bob called me and he says, Well, because John over at Procrast were talking about team play. And he says, what if we came up with a right side strategy to help out the don't? Here's what I told Bob. Bob, I hate the right side. And I gave him the reasons that I hate the right side. Because in my opinion, you're just going to spin your wheels on it. A total dark versus a total right. Especially with sometimes the money. He's laying in odds up here. Uh, and the point gets hit. You know, you may win a couple up here, but it, it, it just sort of seemed to wash itself out. Actually, uh, the first time we played inside, we did a cross. Uh, I was against all this right side, okay? Because I just said, your strategy is good enough to hold its own. Well, but he wanted to try. Well, guess what? He's freaking paying me. So that's what we tried. Here's what we discovered. We would try the inside. We would try regression up and pull. You know, he even played uh, Wayland's 410 ladder. Uh, but it was being played Mickey Mouse. Try a little bit here. Try a little bit there. Try a little bit. Try a little bit. And it whacked him. So while his strategy was making money, the inside was getting its ass tore up. Okay? And so Bob has discovered... That ain't what you do, okay? Now, he does like the 410 ladder that Waylon does, okay? But he don't like the hard way, okay? That's how John will do it. I'm sort of a fan of that, and it was doing okay, but then there were long, long, long streaks that the 4 and 10 the hard ways wasn't happening, so that was getting beat. And so anyway, I said, look, here's what I want you to do. I said, you have to have a strategy that complements the don't, 
okay? Not fight against it. All right. I had mentioned John's Hedgeless Horseman. Now, to be quite honest with you, Bob was not a fan uh, of the Hedgeless Horseman uh, because there's a couple ways to play it. You can play it straight out, you know, three units. You get one here. You got four units to play with. Everybody knows how to play the Horseman. But John also plays it when you run odds up here. And I says, Bob, come on. Let's try the Horseman. And here's why. If you're sitting out here with a don't pass, okay, and then you've got, you know, boo koodles of your odds sitting over here, all right, now we're going to bypass the don't. Now, I know John does the don't, and then he does three comebacks. I said, forget forget putting any more down here. You got enough, all right? So what Bob did, he tweaked it even just a little bit more, and he went for two Comebacks, okay, $10 comes here, and he waited uh, for the second comeback, say there, okay, nothing down here, two comebacks, then he laid odds on it, but he laid odds afterwards, right, boom, now he's sitting here and got odds on those two, so here's what it does. Here's what the hedgeman does, and I think it's very complimentary to a pure don't. Okay, here's what's complimentary about it. So you, you've got that. We waited for the point to be established. You got to come back. Okay, if it's seven out now, obviously he wins, and you win here. Okay, if he's got a point, okay, seven comes. You tie, so so far you can't be hurt, right? The next one comes, you stop, and you got odds. Yes, if the seven comes, you get hurt, but he's not maxing odds up here. You do get hurt a little bit if it's a, like a set your points and the seven comes. Yes, you will get hurt, and that's the uh, part of the horseman is sort of the way it is. But he had enough down here where it offset it, and it didn't really matter. Because he wasn't playing this full tilt like he is down here, okay? But I told him, here's the good thing about the... And I had to press him a little bit to play it. But here's what I told him. I says, on short rolls, seven out, you win. You know, seven out, you tie, okay? Or seven out, uh, you lose a little bit. I said, that's not bad. But he was looking for a right side strategy to complement this well it's those long rolls man it's those long rolls uh, uh and then a point uh that would hurt him okay so now with the horseman he's got these two set up okay if that person gets into a longer roll this gets hit you know they're paying him and now i'm not using exact money this gets hit they're paid him. He comes down. The end. I think we were talking about that today. Vince over there was like, you know, do a three hit and down type of, of system. you got to come down at so, some point. So now he's winning a bunch of money up here on the long roll. So what the horseman did is on the short roll, you do good. On the longer rolls, you'll do good. It's those medium rolls where you get your points and the savvy that hurts you. But he wanted a strategy to make money on the longer rolls. And that's why I decided, let's do the horseman. Uh, but let's do it this way. Now, I was going to do the three. Uh, and he decided just to do the two. Because if he hits one, let's say, all right, let's say he's got a 10 out here. All righty. And it travels. All right. So we're, we're getting three to two odds up here. All right, he may put 30 bucks out here or 20. Let's just make it easy. So he's got $20 in odds. All right, so now he wins his 10 plus 30, and he does that twice. So he can win technically $60 or so if a guy has a, a, a little bit longer roll, and then it sevens out. Now, that's the, that's the hope. 
But I said, out of all the things that I know, and, and I have to admit, I'm not a right side guy. I'm not. Uh, so to put right side strategies with him, I just said to horse me. Uh, that'll protect you on the long rolls and the short rolls. And then those little bitty mediums, okay, but you're covered there. All right. So those are the two major tweaks uh, that we made to his, his system. Now, I know everybody wants to know how to play his system because I know the first, the first four hour session, I think we were up seven, eight hundred bucks. Uh, in the next session, maybe not quite that much, a couple hundred or something like that, but it's that right side that destroyed him. There was one time, I think he lost four or five hundred on the right side. Uh, and only won a few hundred down there, and it was the right side. So I had to say, let's focus on what you did here on your strategy, and we'll just call this a mistake. Yeah, he lost money uh, up here, but guess what? Sometimes you got to lose money to teach you something, okay? And so we have now decided, and again, I wish I could go into, you know, intricate details of when this goes up, when this goes up, when it comes down, and I, you know, if he wants to to share all that, because it's it's just very hard to teach. But there's intricate ways that you have to go up, come down. When do you come down? When do you bet what you bet here? Uh, you know, when do you stay the same? When, I will tell you this, I will tell you this. If you lose two points in a row, so let's say, you know, he's got odds out here, and he loses a point twice. He'll come out flat with no odds, just in case that right side better gets into that roll. Okay, we're still doing the horseman, and we're coming out, but we're not going to keep bleeding odds over and over and over and over on somebody that's going to make four, five, six points. And it happened a lot. All right, that saves him there. So I will tell you that much about his system. After you lose two points in a row, you stop putting odds. Okay, what I'm not going to tell you is that exactly how he goes up here and how much he goes. I won't go into that intricate detail, although I will tell you it's slicker and snot. Okay, and then how much over here. All right, so I think after all, I mean, I don't know exactly what he's up. I guarantee you he was up, uh, but I just shoved him all the money, and he calculated all that, and I know we were up. Had to be, I don't know, 10%, 20 I don't know. He did win. Matter of fact, uh, as I'm trying to figure out my plane because I missed it, he's down there by himself, and so I don't know uh, how that session went because I know he, was gonna, he had another friend coming in, and uh, he had to spend Thursday and Friday with him. So I'll, I'll talk to him Sunday and see how that went. Um, but overall, that's what we did, y'all. It was a good time. It was a good learning uh, for him. And uh, I'm glad that he thought that what he paid me was worth it. Uh, that was the whole point uh, of me going. And, uh, and I learned a lot, too, uh, to be honest with you. Um, I learned that the, in Biloxi, it's it's a great little town, great little town. I know why Waylon he goes. I I don't know where Waylon plays, because I think they've got freaking nine, ten, eleven freaking casinos down there in this little town. Man, it's a casino town for sure. But I like the atmosphere. I really, really, and the airport. Oh my God, you know when you go through TSA, you know you got to take your everything out of your pocket. There's one line, man, one, and you just zip right on through. Um, <laughs> it was a great, they call it, uh, I was taking an Uber to the, uh, to the, uh, airport. Uh, <laughs> and the guy says, well, they call it, you know, Gulfport International Airport. I'm going, this is awful small to be international. He goes, well, it's only because they fly to Mexico twice a year. So now they can call it that. And I thought that was hilarious. Uh, but anyway, uh, <clears throat> there you go. I don't think I, I don't think I need to tell you any more uh, than what I did. Uh, so good trip. We won some money. I'm stupid. Had to pay for a flight home because I'm an idiot. Uh, but other than that, man, uh, 
I think it was well worth it. I believe my client, uh, he told me it did, was worth it. And that's all that matters to me. So if there's anybody else, I still have it on my channel. Uh, you know, if you want to have an hour session with me just over the phone, I think I'm only charging $45 or maybe $75 for two hours. I still have that. And I've got some people that'll, that'll do that too. Uh, I also have things like what I just did. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive to fly my happy ass there and all that, but I think you'll find it worth it. So is there anybody uh, that is looking for any uh, of my mentoring coaching services? Just go to my website and you'll see all the information there. All right, I believe that's it for today. Uh, I hope uh, that answered everybody's questions about the trip. Uh, I appreciate everybody. I think I'm at 982 subscribers. I need about 18 more. Uh, oh, one last thing. I met two people down there that actually uh, uh, were subscribers to my channel. Floored me. They come up to me. Hey, you're Ken with Ken Knows Gambling. Yeah, I could tell by your one shirt. I went, okay, that's cool. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of losing people. <laughs> at the casino so if i'm getting coffee or something and i hear them talking about how they lost i would just say well you know i overheard hey go to my channel i'll help you out so i got to put my word out there a lot too uh, but the two people coming up and said they they subscribed to me or saw me uh, and they recognized me that was cool too um uh, i really really got floored by that but I think I need about 18 more. So if anybody's watching, they're not subscribed, please do. Uh, so I can get to that magical thousand. So I can make about six, seven bucks a month. I think is what it comes down to. Uh, it's not about the money, y'all. I promise you. It's just about that, I don't know, that ring. You got to get to it. It's like you're not anybody until you get to a thousand. That's the way YouTube looks at it. So uh, if you're not a subscriber, please think about doing it. But uh, anyway, share this video. That's the best thing you can do for me. If you like my channel, share this video. Until the next time, y'all, be great.